Good morning traders, fellow privateers. Welcome to the week ahead video. This could be a very interesting open. I'm sure everyone is caught up on the weekend news and some of the developments out of Jackson Hole on Friday. You know, early on, I've got this uh, S&P mini chart up, just the hourly chart. You can see here, like early in uh, early kind of New York session, China announced they were going to retaliate with tariffs on $75 billion worth of goods and ags and that sort of thing and autos. <clears throat> this was also after... Um, Powell sounded a bit dovish. You can see here, this is this bar, this green bar is the, the, the market took it as um, Powell's address at the, at the at Jackson Hole being dovish and bonds and stocks rallied on that. And that fizzled up pretty quickly because then Trump started warning. What Not only was he talking about, um, he hinted at some sort of discussion of the, the strong dollar and potentially, you know, a, a verbal intervention or something even more forceful than verbal intervention in the dollar. So a combination of that and then Trump did say he was going to announce um, he wasn't happy with China's retaliation and he was going to come back with something in the afternoon and uh, risk really did not like it. And you can see here, um, you know, it was right around 10 a.m. Um, Chicago. So right around the fix, uh, they really started hammering the S&Ps. And uh, we took out these old lows at 2890 and took out this 200-hour uh, moving average. And then it, it started getting a bit manic here you can see here there was a market on closing balance of about four billion dollars um and that here's the last bar here's the last hour full hour trading um you can see it got all the way down to 2834 perilously close to um, a level that a lot of people have been highlighting this 2820 area um 28 15, 20. You know, you can see we've just, we've been holding this range here now for a while. And, you know, the S&P futures, the minis, did breach in that August, <clears throat> that August 5th low when Trump announced more tariffs, um, or August 6th, I guess it was. We did breach the 200-day moving average and then popped back up and, you know, traded back into this range. So it's it's been very sideways and choppy in a volatile uh, August and, um, you know, I've read over the weekend, people expecting, potentially expecting some sort of black, black Monday, uh, the, end, the, the open is going to be very interesting, but you know, that's still about three, three and a half hours from now, um, before the, uh, the S and P's and the, the equity index futures open in the U S so we'll be watching, we'll be watching this low from Friday and then, of course, the low that we saw uh, back on the uh, 15th and then the, the all-important August low here um, as, you know, big, big support levels. Uh, we think that we can trade back down through all this and, and you know, retest the June lows. It's kind of been a target for us. Um, so we're going to call it, you know, break of 28, 15, 20. Then we go back down, we test this 27.25 low, and then that low daily close is 27.50. So call it 27.25 to 27.50. And I know that sounds like a kind of a big zone, a big range, but with the heightened volatility, um, let me just show you like a 15-minute chart of what happened. I mean, here's here's a 15-minute bar on Friday, like right before the uh, exchange is closed. You got a move from 28.34 and almost felt like a plunge protection team all the way up to 28.60 um, before settling at 28.51. So volatility is indeed heightened. Um, let's take a look at, you can see the average true range down here, you know, is the highest it's been in ages. 
about just right around 50 handles in the S&P. And, you know, that, that shows up in the VIX and, and uh, you know, within in the, the heightened fixed income volatility, fixed income volatility as well. Take a look at what uh, tenure yields had a, a bearish engulfing day, um, just as we were starting to get thinking rates were going higher. China came out, Trump came out, and Powell, you know, they're pricing in a 50 basis point cut at the next meeting now in uh, September. And just a reminder, we do have, I believe it was 19 or 22 central banks um, all in the month of September. You know, we are in the last week of August. Still have some stragglers probably coming back in from holidays, but, uh, you know, school starting um, in the U.S. at least. They're, they're, they've either started or they're starting next week. So, um, you know, we're expecting the, you know, kind of the main risk takers, the PMs, you know, getting back in their saddle and nothing else after Friday's antics between Trump and G and Powell. Um, I got to think that some of these more experienced traders are going to be called back to their desks, even if they're, you know, their holidays are still, uh, you know, if they're, they're planning on being away for a few more days, it's, it's probably a good time to get some, um, people with some experience. Cause at, at this point you've got 20 somethings managing the, the risk at uh, a lot of these major banks and they're not really used to heightened volatility. Um, so we'll see, take a look at this. I, I got this from our buddy, Greg McKenna. Um, kind of macro here's just the weekly changes you can see here the euro is up a half percent dollar yen obviously got hit pretty hard uh, in particular on friday we'll look at that chart in a minute cable outperformed the other majors and gold of course is up decent on, on the risk off and the s p's were down for i think it was the fourth week in a row i'll gather weekly and then the wti was down just over a percent um, that again following uh let's take a look at this yeah, so the S&P has been down one, two, three, four, four red weeks, all with lower closes. Um, and, you know, if you're going all the way back to that December low, you can see that we paused here around this the third retracement, but I don't, I don't see any reason why we can't, uh, can't retrace even further. You know, this might take a, you know, take us into the end of September, but I could see, uh, I could see lower prices for sure. And I, I don't really know what to think on this, uh, on the open. You know, we've been, been hearing bits and bobs from on Twitter and, uh, other social media, you know, what, what's expected. And, uh, you know, I could see a, I could see an early sell off and then maybe things stabilize a little bit. Trump can't be too happy, um, with how, um, how equities reacted on Friday. He was trying to put the blame on Powell and that because Powell wasn't dovish enough. And at the end of the day, it was really, um, the real catalyst for the risk off was, was all, um, was all Trump related. Hold on. I'm getting a call. Uh, hold on one second. Um, all right. So let's get to, let's see. I had a couple other things that I, snagged off of um, Greg McKenna. Here's the, the correlation, just an overlay of uh, gold and the and the 10 year notes. And you can see that um, these things have been trading in you know, very highly correlated, you know, of late. Looks like gold's got more room. I think bonds probably have some more room after, you know, it had a, a couple day pause. Um, where yields were ticking up a bit. And then here's another one. Uh, what does Greg say? Grab the tin hat folks and maybe a handful or three of gold. This Andreas Dino Larson um, talking about how the VIX, um, how it reacts to the inverted yield curve. And um, it looks like the VIX has got a long way to go. You know, VIX is 20 ish and you know, could probably get all the way up to 40 if, if the fixed income market is 
is correct and the yield curve for the twos tens is telling the real story uh let's take a look at the vix while i got this here hold on <coughs> pardon me uh we're right around 20 and we close just under 20. that's a weekly uh, you can see what it did on friday had the big move from uh you know it was down around 16 and got up to 21 and then that little late like 15 minute futures rally brought this fix back down right into the close but the open's gonna be interesting i'll be on um, i wanted to get this video out earlier um and then uh you know we can you'll you can follow us on twitter and we'll be making some comments um so let's get into currencies look at some uh Let's take a look at gold here while I'm over here on the macro. So we've had a new high daily close in gold up here at 1526. We still haven't taken out that high um, from a couple of weeks ago, but it's also a new high weekly close. These are markets. We don't go home short markets that are making new high weekly closes and um, or new low weekly closes. This is you know a pure momentum thing. Again, it is looking a little frothy, but um, I would say you know stick with it until you see some sort of reversal uh, patterns you know we didn't got kind of choppy we had this kind of big red bar here back up it's respecting this 1535 level um i would imagine that gets taken out soon you know so for us it's kind of 1490 1535 that kind of range um if we hop over to the currencies uh one couple Guys, I was listening to this weekend. We we're talking Euro Aussie and Euro Mex, and you know the market is well short the euro. And you can see what uh, you know Euro Aussie is a great proxy for risk off. You know, higher Euro Aussie. So they're they're uh, you can see this daily that, that Friday. That was a, a good update. They're buying back their the currencies that they're short, and. Um, which in this case is the euro, and then they're selling Aussie, and you know, selling Aussie is a proxy for trade wars. Um, one other thing we were talking about on Friday with uh, a couple of colleagues, we were, we were talking how this trade war could, you know, this is very big macro, but this trade war could eventually turn into a cold war, like the U.S. and Russia had for years, where you're just not even trading, you're not even a trading partner. I mean, that does seem a bit extreme at this point, but it's something that will. You know we're going to be paying close attention to um the whole trade war and um and i'm getting another call right now hold on one second pardon me um so you know euro aussie is a good way euro max is another one that uh this is actually interesting if i go to the weekly you can see this uh horizontal line here this is where we, pretty much where we opened the year. So people have been short Euro max and that's just a pure carry trade, right? You're funding it with euros and you're buying max, which is a higher yield, even after their surprise 50 basis point cut. But the CTAs and the trend, you know, the trend followers and anyone, any of the carry play type investors are now basically basically underwater um you know they've picked up some yield being short this year but if you start getting you know a move higher in euro max which it looks like this could really go um, i don't see why i can't get all the way up here to you know near 23 um and actually if we if we uh with me remove if we go back to 2018 um, if we go back to 2018 highs which are way up at 20 almost 25 if we run that fib down to these 19 lows you know the two-thirds is up here around 2318 2317 um, and there's some old highs here 2350 so this is something I'd pay close attention to because uh if you've had this short euro max trade on all year you will start feeling pain uh you know once the price of euro max goes up more than the yield that you've picked up 
having that position on. So, you know, and you can see that in, you know, there's, there's a lot of these, um, you know, a lot of, you could, you could look at, uh, Euro against Turkey or against, uh, Rand, anything, but if you see here, the, you know, dollar EM has done quite well. They're, you know, they're buying, um, and that's what happens in these risk off the dollar raw perform and emerging market currencies will struggle. Um, dollar China, this is huge. The open today is going to be really important. Um, we think a break of 714, these old highs, that target, the first target is 725, 730. And then the stretch target would be way up at kind of seven, um, 760 to 770. Um, so we'll be watching that on the open, the Euro dollar again, um, there's your weekly, uh, the weekly, yeah, see, so yeah, the weekly dollar, Euro dollar took out previous week's low and then reversed and closed kind of close to the highs. Um, if you look at a, uh, if you look at a daily, the, the mini break here was just over this 111.15 and there were some momentum players. Uh, we're, we closed just above the 15 day and we stopped right around 30 days. So we start getting above the 15 and 30 and we, and you start seeing these moving averages cross, uh, turn higher. There's no reason we can't get up here. Again, the positioning is, you know, it's pretty well short, um, short the Euro. So, um, that concerns me a bit, uh, dollar yen, obviously, we're going to go to the hourly on that just so you can see what happened. This thing shit the bed in a big way. Um, again, it's, you know, all around the same time. This is Jackson Hole. This is uh, Powell at Jackson Hole sounding dovish. At the same time, Trump kind of hinting at some sort of intervention in the dollar. Doesn't like the strong dollar. You get that. And then you get the, the double whammy of, um, you know, the real big sell-off when Trump then was threatening the, the uh, Chinese. Um, there was a bit, some good news in, out of, uh, out of this, uh, G7 and that was, uh, let me go to this Heisenberg. That was the, um, they did announce, um, uh, where did I read this? Trump says Japan and the U S have reached a trade agreement in principle. Well, we'll see about that, but anyhow, that's about the only good news I read. RBA's low was speaking over the weekend, uh, says monetary policy can push up asset prices, but can't really deliver medium term growth. So I think a lot of these central bankers are starting to realize that, uh, the limits, um, of, you know, lower rates and the race to zero. And at some point, you know, fiscal stimulus is going to, you know, will, will be the next, the next step from the central banks and, and these countries trying to deliver growth. Um, Trump also was saying he's very serious about ordering U S companies out of China and he has the power to do it. I think that's true from what we, um, have read over the weekend. Um, again, that, that, that goes along with the, the cold war, you know, the trade war turning into a cold war. Listen, anything is possible with Trump. Um, the other thing there was, I think some miscommunication Trump had originally said something this weekend when he was interviewed about, I think he was talking to Boris Johnson. He said he had, uh, someone asked him if he had any second thoughts about raising tariffs on China on Friday afternoon following Beijing's retaliatory measures. Um, yeah, sure. Why not? He said, might as well. You might as well. I mean, this is verbatim. I mean, it's a, it's a video you can get it on. Uh, I have it on my other computer cause I can't share with you right now, but, um, then Cudlow, um, Cudlow came out to try to clarify it. This is all, it's also very, very confusing, but actually what Trump was intending to say was that he always has second thoughts and he had actually second thoughts about possibly a higher tariff response to China. So just as you thought, Maybe there would be some pushback and, and Trump would, 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 you know, have a softer stance. Um, Cudlow said, no, he, Trump's second thoughts were more about the extent of the increase in tariffs. Um, so anyhow, this is very fluid. Um, 
Oh, and here's something coming over Zero Hedge. Hong Kong police defends officer's decision to fire a gun as, a be as the best option. So this Hong Kong, these Hong Kong protests are not, are not, um, they're not getting any better. They're getting outright scary uh, with the increase in violence over the weekend. Um, so anyhow, here's Dal Yen. That's the hourly, the daily. You can see we broke um, some big support levels. Um, one of the areas that we, um, I, hey, I don't know why this gets, okay, here we go. We broke 106.70, let's see, hold on, this is the daily. Let me see if I can refresh this. This gets very strange, uh, the trading view, like the pre-open. Um, a lot of times you get this goofy, uh, these goofy looking charts. Anyhow, the big level for us is this 105 area. Um, that we held a couple days. We broke through uh, support here at 106.15.20 very cleanly, and then it, it really took on a form of its own. It got it got a little bit scary there Friday afternoon. Um, and if we look at the weekly, you know, we're going to go back to this, you know, whatever we thought this was. I think it was 104.25 was maybe the real low. Um, anyhow, that that area, you know on this chart says 104.67 and then you have that low back in March of 18 which was uh, 104.65 so um, you know a, a clean break of 105 would, would get things going and then I'd, I'll call it 104.50 which is most of the price chart watchers are, are have been highlighting that as a as a, the big breakdown um, what else? Cable had a good week. Um, we've been talking about being wanting to be long cable. We've been long sterling against a few different crosses, and uh, this is probably more than this is probably more just a positioning adjustment. I don't think that there's been anything good or anything really new coming out of Brexit. Um, I believe Boris Johnson said something this weekend about not paying the 39 billion um, pound divorce bill to uh, Europe and instead it would be somewhere along the lines of nine billion so i guess that'd be somewhat positive you know the uk and british pound um dollar swissy we had uh, a nice move up off the lows we were short this and it wasn't really working so we cut out and you know had had a couple pretty decent move up again that was another position positioning cleanse so then you can see what happened on friday massive bearish engulfing right so um you know, bearish engulfing a dollar yen, dollar Swiss, uh, not a bullish engulfing in that, um, bullish engulfing in Euro with a horizontal break. Um, may as well look at Aussie. Aussie came under some pressure. Here we are sitting around these old low daily closes. Uh, you know, right here, this is important. Break of this level here, 67.35 is important. Um, just writing that down because that's a that's a break trade for me right here um kiwi had a nice little pop on friday it actually held on to its gains considering the um considering the risk off sentiment that uh that was uh you know the flavor of the day really um take a look at the calendar um this is a from forex live you know free calendar i think it's pretty good um, if we go to Monday, uh, we have some import export data looks like in, uh, uh, coming out in a few hours, but then we have IFO, which is important for Germany, durable goods, somewhat important, yet pretty volatile number out of the U S <clears throat> GDP out of Germany. This German data this week is important. Um, you know, we could, we feel like we're on the cusp of a, uh, of a recession in Germany, um, which could have all sorts of negative implications throughout Europe. So I would say all their data is very important. ZEW coming out of Switzerland. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we get into Thursday. Uh, some of the CPI, preliminary CPI data out of Germany, that's important. And um, 
GDP numbers out of the US on Thursday. And what else do we have? Friday, German retail sales. So, I mean, it's a pretty full, it's a pretty full calendar. Some data, the GDP coming out of um, Canada. Uh, so, you know, last week of, uh, and then we have the China PMI data coming out next weekend. So, you know, it's the last week of August. We've got people probably being told to come back a day early. I would imagine there'll be a lot of people in front of their screens in a few hours time, um, you know, waiting to see how, how the market reacts to uh, the news flow over the weekend. So anyhow, we will be on Twitter in a few hours uh, just to kind of keep you guys informed as to how the market's opening. And then you'll hear from us on the, um, on the European Open per normal. All right, well, good luck this week. As Greg McKenna was saying, put, grab the tin hats because it certainly seems like tin hat time. Um, you'll hear from us in, uh, on the European Open. Right, all the best. Good luck. Cheers.